What's going on guys? Is your OBS lagging or dropping frames on your lower end or budget PC? Well, I want to tell you that with the right settings, even an old PC or a budget rig can stream and record in really nice quality. And that's what this video is going to be for you today. Now, I want to clarify to you guys that what I mean by a lower end or an older or a budget PC, I'm talking about a rig with maybe four or eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, a GPU that's like maybe four, five, six, seven, eight years old, a CPU that's five, six, seven, eight years old, a pretty old rig, right? But most people don't realize that even these PCs can stream and record with decent quality. So in this video, that's what we're going to cover. And honestly, if you guys are looking for ways to brighten up your stream, if you're getting into streaming, maybe make your stream stand out from the sea of streamers that's over on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube, you want to be unique, then you guys got to check out today's sponsor, Owned.tv. Owned.tv is your one-stop shop for fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Kick, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full-themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover, but let's say you're looking to pick up some new alert graphics, don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You could find single graphics such as alerts, emotes, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about these overlays is that they are completely modular. So if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you could change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you're looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. And don't forget, use code HAMMER at checkout for an additional 50% off your order. Now, back to the video. All right, guys, so we're over here over onto my desktop. You can see my OBS right here. And the first thing I want to go over is a couple of tips and tricks that you guys can do to make OBS run better on your lower end or older PC, right? So the first thing I want you guys to do is find your OBS and you're going to right click on it and you're going to click properties. Now, when you're in the properties window, you're going to come over to the compatibility tab and you're going to check the box that says run this program as administrator. You're going to hit apply and then OK. The next thing we're going to do is you're going to come into your OBS settings. You're going to go to the advanced tab on the left side and under process priority up top, you're going to set this to above normal, hit apply and then hit OK again. And the last quick tip that I can give you guys to boost the performance of OBS on your older machine is when you see this preview window here in the middle of OBS where you can kind of see what your scene is compiled of, you're going to right click this and you're going to uncheck enable preview. Now, this is going to hide that preview. You can't see it, but it's still there and everything is still happening in that scene. Disabling that preview grants so many more free resources over to OBS. Like running that preview takes up a lot of resources on your PC. So if you have an older or lower end or a budget rig, disable that preview and you're going to get a lot more performance boost for OBS. Now let's jump into some of the settings, right? So we're going to go into our OBS settings down at the bottom here. And the first thing we're going to do is come over to the output tab. We're going to be doing the streaming and recording settings, right? So for streaming, you want to come down to where it says video encoder and you're going to click the drop down. Mine's grayed out right now. I can't click it because we are recording currently, but in this drop down, you're going to be able to either select an NVIDIA, NVENC, um, your AMD GPU encoder or X264. So if you have an NVIDIA GPU, select the NVIDIA one. If you have an AMD GPU, select the AMD one. And if you don't have a GPU, maybe you're trying to stream from a laptop and use your CPU to do the encoding, that's going to be X264. But just to go on record, I want to make sure you guys understand that if you do have a GPU, the AMD and the NVIDIA options are definitely better selected here. So choose those if you have them. If not, select X264. Next, you're going to come down to the encoder settings. You're going to want your rate control set to constant bitrate or CBR. And then your bitrate, you're going to change this to 2500. And you can maybe go up a little bit higher to 3000 if you guys have decent internet. Uh, but don't go any higher than 3000 if you're on a low end PC. 3000 is going to be your cap. And then for your keyframe interval, you're going to set this to two seconds. For your preset, you're want, I want you guys to start at P4, which is medium quality. This looks pretty good. It's really not that big of a difference from P7. So you're going to start on P4. And then if you have any issues or OBS maybe is lagging from time to time, you can drop it down to P3, which is lower qual low quality or P2, which is lower quality. But set, P set it to P4 as your starting point and then work your way down if you're having any issues. 
For tuning, you're going to set this to high quality. For multi-pass mode, you can choose single pass or two passes quarter resolution. Um, I would select two passes quarter resolution first, and then if you're having issues, you could drop it down to single pass. And then for your profile, you're going to want to set this to main or high. You could select main as a starting point and then go to high if you feel like your PC can handle it. For look ahead, you're going to have this unchecked. Adaptive quantization, have this checked and B frames set to two. Now let's jump over to the recording tab up top. For this, we're going to do the same thing with our video encoder. If you have that AMD or that NVIDIA option, you're going to select that as your encoder. If not, you're going to select X264 and you're going to come down here and for the rate control, you're going to select con constant QP. And then for the constant QP level, you're going to set this to 24. You guys set this to 24. The higher the number, the lesser the quality, right? I'm recording at 16 to give you a reference, um, but it takes up a lot more power. The file is enormous. It takes up a lot. So you're going to start at 24. And if everything's running fine, you maybe try dropping it down to, to 22. And if that's running fine, drop it down to 20 and so on and so forth. But 24 is a really good starting point there. And then for the rest of the settings here, again, you're going to do two seconds for the keyframe interval. You're going to do P4 for the preset. You're going to do high quality for tuning and you're going to do two passes quarter resolution on multi-pass mode and your profile is going to be set to main. Now, the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is going to be over in the video tab here. We're going to jump over to video tab and for your base canvas resolution, this is going to be the resolution of the monitor that you are looking at, the one that you are portraying to your stream, the what you have people, you know, seeing. This is going to be whatever that monitor's resolution is. Like I'm gaming and looking at a 2K monitor right now. So my base canvas resolution is 2560 by 1440. And I'm not streaming or recording in 2K. I'm doing that in 1080p. So my output scaled resolution is 1920 by 1080. So, you know, do the same thing there. If your monitor is 1080p, your base cam canvas resolution is going to be 1080p. Um, what I want you guys to do is whatever your base cam canvas resolution is, is fine. Select that. For your output scaled resolution, you're going to switch this to 1280 by 720 because streaming and recording in 1080p um, takes so many more resources than 720 for not the biggest quality bump, especially if you're doing like high action, a lot of movement uh, games and stuff like that, right? So you're going to output your scaled resolution to 1280 by 720. Your downscale filter, you're going to select Lanxos. And then for your common FPS values, you're going to change this to 30 FPS. If you can run everything perfectly with the 30 FPS, you can try bumping it up to 60 here. Uh, but I do suggest 30 because streaming and recording at 60 FPS is like double the resources as 30 FPS, right? So start at 30 and every, if everything's running fine, then bump it up to 60 from there. Now, the next thing I just want to tell you guys to do here is you're going to come up to the top. You're going to click view and you're going to click stats. This is going to bring up a stats window for OBS. And what this is going to show you is when you're recording or streaming, it's going to show you, um, your, you know, dropped frames and things like that. It's basically giving you uh, a rundown of how OBS is running. So I'm encouraging you guys to do some quick test streams, test recordings, and anything of that nature before you go live or try and do your final recording. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. A lot of people don't realize that even with older PCs, you can still stream and record with good quality if you know the right settings and you know what you're doing. And that was the purpose of this video. I hope I was able to help you guys out. And if I did, please hit that like button. Jump over to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash hammerdance. I stream Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And subscribe to this channel. If you like this type of content, this is all we do here on this channel. So subscribe and turn on those post notifications. But anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. Keep those hammers up and I'll see you next time.